Hello, everyone, and welcome to RHAP. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and I am here tonight with a a, 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 a gaggle of guests uh, to talk about the new HOH on Big Brother Canada 12 and this uh, eviction episode that we saw here uh, tonight on a Wednesday night here uh, in the Big Brother Canada season of 12. With me to talk through it all. It's Mike Bloom. How you doing, Mike? Ah, uh, Taryn, I know it's Survivor Night, so excuse me for copping a phrase from a previous winner, but these guys are so dumb, and I'm so excited to talk about the tomfoolery happening this week. A lot of tomfoolery, even though Tom from Season 1 is not back. Uh, also joining me tonight is Lavina. How you doing, Lavina? I'm doing great. I'm so glad to be here. I haven't podcasted it in a while in general, but I feel like um, I haven't pos- podcasted about, do you see what I mean? I'm stuttering my words. Um, I haven't podcasted about Big Brother in a hot minute either. Um, I've been a mega casual this season, but late. I feel like I jumped in at the perfect time to start podcasting because it's just been such chaos and I'm thrilled. Just so I can't cl- wait to get into it. To clarify, Lavina, you said mega casual, right? Mega mm-hmm. casual. Okay. It sounded like something a little bit different. It's like, well, certain parts of the fan base, I think, would vote <laughs> America's favorite player if you said that. Oh my God, my. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, finally, we have the betrayer. Kirsten, how you doing, Kirsten? <laughs> How am I the betrayer? I didn't what think did it would I you. <laughs> I, I'm just, listen, I'm just glad I'm here on a podcast. Mike Bloom is fully dressed, at least what we can see on camera. So far. So Mike this is, is a out. win in my book. Oh my God. <laughs> no. It's 11 o'clock on the East Coast, could you tell? <laughs> It's been two minutes into the podcast. Stop it. Mike, don't try and blame this on the hour of day. You would have said that at eight in the morning. You would say it in the middle of the night. You would say it at lunch. (laughs) Don't act like it's a time dependent thing. Boy. Yeah, daylight savings is a bitch, you know. It's, I'm an hour later than how How I would usually say it. It's been like a month. He's like, that daylight savings in like 60 days. <laughs> I mean, but that is so me. Like the day we're going to get the hour of sleep back, I'll be like, well, thank God. This daylight savings has just been such a bitch. <laughs> mm. well, uh, well, we have we have an hour of television to talk about, whether it took place uh, before or after daylight savings. And, um, you know. In that hour of television, we got, you know, a, a solid like 10 minutes of content. So uh, we'll talk through we'll talk through it all. Um, it was a a wild week, um, and there was a lot of drama that we saw. Some of it was in this episode. Um, there was a lot of chaos and confusion about this vote. Uh, very little of that was in this episode. Um, but most importantly to me is that we actually got an HOH competition. Uh, like they started the episode and they said a live HOH, and I I literally went, oh. Wait, I care now. <laughs> yeah, but he, they probably only said that because we're pro- we're likely not going to get digital dailies for Good Friday or and possibly on Easter Monday also. Mm. Thank oh, yeah. you, and Jesus. And the ones we do get will be full of <laughs> Dennis campaigning. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> he died for our sins. That being making sure we get an HO in July on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> is that why we had... come back to this podcast again. Oh, my god. oh my god is that why we had an egg competition with skip the dishes there that's what i might do but they weren't colored at least they could color them they could do like a little activity and color them and then do it so that well, no, been that'll be the, sun- the sunday episode will be probably them coloring easter coloring pages with like bunnies and rabbits and stuff did and they eggs. use the bunny challenge too early i feel like in retrospect yes. it shouldn't have been the first veto a hundred percent. I thought I instantly thought that when it, it, it aired, I was like, "What are we doing here?" <laughs> These should, are so should soon. We, should we reenact since this was like a sponsored segment? And obviously, mm. that's like you really want to do something catchy with the sponsored segment. And so, let's do. Should we try and like see if that works as a podcast? If we just move in slow motion for five minutes Taryn I have anxiety I don't move in slow motion like, <laughs> always to, to be fair Bounce people listen to me at two times speed me slow down to 0. 0.5 is like everyone else's 1.5 <laughs> so fair. 
Okay, but wait. I would like to say something about the sponsored segment. Just as like an, a, a grieved Canadian, Skip sucks now. What a sponsor for Big Brother Canada. Skip, when it was Skip the Dishes, they used to be so good. Never had issues. If there was a problem with your driver or your food, instantly refund you. You were so good. I think Taryn's carrying an egg. Taryn looks like a senior citizen (laughs) who's lost in the mall. Well, but uh, anyways, (laughs) the Skip, they suck. And I had to delete the app off of my phone. And I will never order from Skip again. And if I could influence one Canadian listening to this podcast to delete Skip from their phone. Uh, you also oh save God. money. Just saying. Period. Taren, yeah, I, I, I thought, this is true. I thought you got up because I was like, oh, like he has to grab, like, I don't know, grab something. <laughs> I was like, I, yeah, I what did. the hell is he doing? I, <laughs> I, I considered joining this podcast with an egg and a spoon and then I was like, no, that's so annoying. Everyone would hate that so much. And then Taryn just did it without the egg. <laughs> yeah. It's, listen, it's the egg that's the problem. The, yeah, the egg, the egg makes it bad. The, you don't want to have to actually be stressed about an egg spilling somewhere. Well, uh, and yeah, also, just... they were holding the egg against their bodies. You shouldn't be allowed wow. to do that. You should have to actually yeah. extend the egg on the spoon. Was there, a, was there a minimum amount of distance you had to move? Like, could you not just stand still outside yeah. the skip door for the entire half hour? I was just like, yeah. dude, just chill on the couch. It's 30 minutes. <laughs> Like, I kind of think that's what Lexus I think they had to stand up. They must have had to. I mean, to be fair, it seems like from Lexus's edit, she doesn't really move anywhere. So I think it makes sense that she more so just kind of sticks to the couch. Oh, she goes somewhere, but it's that one spot. Oh, she goes goose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh boy. No. Uh, well, <laughs> of course, we opened up the episode on some of the fallout from the dramatic uh, heel turn that was Vivek's move, uh, backdooring his closest ally, Dennis, which led to this just amazing confrontation between the two of them uh, in the pool table room. Uh, I even used like a clip of it in the short we put out because I was just like, this is just too good. Him, him saying like, I've never regretted anything more in my life than when I saved you last week. No, You've no. killed me. It's worse than betrayer. that, though, Darren. It's worse than that. He goes, I have never regretted anything in my life, and I don't regret anything in my life, except saving you last week. Like, so much worse than, oh, I regret it the most. Like, d- like, damn, Dennis, okay. Uh, like, get him. Dennis okay. the menace. I, I am obsessed. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this. This is Shakespeare. This is high quality drama of Dennis just quartering his audience of one in the room and delivering this entire monologue. I literally saved you and you killed me. I'm gone. You know that. Uh, how are you going to win when I'm not around? You're next. Like he just kept going and it was unbelievable. I enjoy it so, so much. And here's the thing like, now you can clearly tell how scripted and coached the diary rooms are because like that was just as heightened, but delivered straight from the heart. You can tell with the way that Dennis was pouring his every soul. The meme is going around on Twitter. Uh, what's someone singing like the rent is due. Dennis was delivering like his rent was due, which it probably is now that unfortunately he's not taking home that money. Yeah. We should have oh script read that conversation, Mike. <laughs> that would have been a great Both table show. read, honestly. <laughs> uh, well, and then, you know, Vivek is just standing there. Like I followed your advice to do this. I was thinking logic. And it's like, st- stop it. Stop it right now. Don't even like, can you imagine whether it's true or not? Staring someone in the face and being like, yeah, it's because of your advice that I've done this to you. The part that I thought, the part that I thought was insane was, I hate like the eyebrow scrunch and pisses me off. Um, But like, I feel like the part that made me the most upset, I'm covering you with my, I'm covering you (laughs) with my hand on my screen so I can't see you. (laughs) Um, But the part that um, was just wild to me was when he was, um, when, when, uh, 
when Dennis was like, well, nobody's going to, nobody's going, or you're next or whatever. No one's going to trust you anymore. And he goes, well, Anthony's going to trust me. I was like, are you a pick me girl? Like, come yes. on. Yeah. And he's yeah. not getting picked. No. Uh, yeah. That's, he's that's fast. the entire thing is that this is like uh, someone in a high school movie, like embarrassing their only friend to try to get with the cool kids. And then the cool yeah. kids are like, no, we didn't want you to do that anyway. But like, we don't even yeah. have to go that far because it's literally like BB can six when yeah. Ryan nominated Drew. And I hate to say it on a podcast because I don't want to like bring it back up. And then Ryan will def continue to defend it to this day because he always will. But it's like, they're Was not. I, th I thought he was very open about like I really messed it up. Oh no, oh. no, he will. T he will tell you it was his only choice, <laughs> unless things have changed. I I'm not sure, but like people think, oh, I'm on the outs, so now I have to ingratiate myself with the cool, the cool group. But it ne it never works. They just like use you and discard you once your power is gone. It's it's just not. It's not a long term success plan. Mm -hmm. I uh, so I will say first and foremost like I have been really enjoying this season so far I'll admit uh I am a bit of a mega casual a la Lavina in a way that like I was a bit thinking okay there's no live feeds I'm gonna wait until Survivor AU is over and I'm gonna like peek in to see if the season's good I did this last season I watched the Zach episode and then I was like all right I'm pretty much good after that and then I heard a little bit about like a lot of wackadoo crap happening in this season. And I was not disappointed. And what I'm obsessed with is now we have two weeks in a row where after the HOH, you know, ends up putting up someone that they thought was close to them, that they feel so bad about it. You know, having Victoria last week, like sobbing about how she hasn't gotten any sleep and she feels terrible. And now Vivek, like Taryn's doing, trying to give himself preemptive crow's feet by being like, I'm just doing what you told me to. It's wild because they they're trying to convince themselves that they're committing manslaughter when this is full murder. This is premeditated. Pre meditated. AF. <laughs> they, they did not say, oh, no, I can't believe I did this by accident. Like you had the power and you were the one to do it. I, well, that, I, was... I mean, the other thing, too, though, Mike, is you might be going too far taking Victoria's tears on their face because it's like she maybe believes them in the moment, but you never know what she's going to believe at the end of the week, which is, of course, the danger of playing with someone like Victoria. Mm. Well, there was more drama between these two that we saw on the drops that they did not get to in the episodes, which is a, a serious shame um, because they had a, another extremely dramatic conversation uh, a few days later uh, where when after they had some time to cool off where it was just more of, of Vivek kind of being like, you know, I just hope that someday you'll be able to forgive me. But I, if, if you don't, I, I completely understand. And, you know, it just you are the best person I've ever met in my entire life. And I just hope that you know that it was you that convinced me to play this way um and uh and and then dennis would respond like you know i really hope that i can forgive you someday <laughs> oh my god well okay taryn i'm sure that you have not watched love is blind but a couple seasons ago there was a confessional of one of the men on the season literally putting in eye drops oh to make god. it look like he had oh, ears oh because he wanted to look like he was crying in the confessional but the producers kept up he's like oh one second pulls out the drops <laughs> gives himself the drops and then the producers kept it in that he was making himself cry you can't pre-produce like yourself we're yeah. like three seconds away from Vivek doing that. The best part, though, was that at the end of the conversation, they talked for a while and it was awkward. They didn't know how to end the conversation. And Dennis is just kind of like, OK, like, come, let's hug it out. And and Vivek's Vivek, his face and his response was this. Really? And then they hugged for so long. It's oh, so, so pathetic. Long. It's a pathetic showing. And then after he left, v Vivek was just like, oh, that was so amazing of him to even <laughs> consider. Uh. <laughs> uh, it's just it's just incredible. Like the way he's coming across is as if 
he was accosted on his way to the veto ceremony of like, <laughs> quick, you better do this. And he's like, okay. And he's like, oh, in the moment, I just made this decision and I screwed up. He very much stands by the decision though, is, is part of it. Like he, on a personal level, he's like, this is the worst thing I've ever done. But game wise, it was the right call. And you'll see. You'll see. <sighs> um, it's just, it's, it's, it was very funny to watch this whole, this whole thing play. out. And I, I was talking to my chat while I was watching the episode and I was like, I was asking them if, and I'll ask the same to you guys, uh, wh what do you actually, what annoys you more? If you're Dennis, you've just been betrayed. Uh, is it somebody who's like going to stand there and be completely remorseless and be like, yeah, I, I screwed you over, get over it. Uh, or is it like the Vivek where they're just like, I know, I know, I'm so sorry. I just had to do it. I'm, yeah, because well, if they the say it to your face, that. like I meant to do this to you and I, I screwed you over and I'm not sorry, like the the Dougie when he's telling Victoria, oh, I'm not sorry, that at least you'd be like, okay, you have some principles, you have, you stand for something. But the way Vivek is acting, I'd be like, oh, so he's breathing. That's annoying to me. Like even if he wasn't doing all the, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's so nice that you gave me a hug. Thank you. No. Don't be in the same room as me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I like, no. Yeah. For me, I think I would rat, I would be more annoying for them to just be like BSing to my face. Mm -hmm. If they just straight up were like, yeah, I had to do it, you know, and I don't, and I stand by my decision, I would just be like, okay, cool. That's a conclusion to me. You're dead to me. For this <laughs> one, it's not as much as a conclusion where you're like, now I'm like, oh my God, like, do I have to like, do emotional labor for this person who just stabbed me in the back. Oh, okay. Maybe. And then you have like a tug of war where you're like, Oh, but I'm empathetic. And like, that's who I am as a person. That's how I would feel. But if you just tell me like, yeah, I made this decision. I'd be like, okay, bye. I'm going to leave. Lavina, now. Are you talking about big brother or dating men? <laughs> 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 I mean, por no los dos. I mean, that's the thing. I totally agree with Lavina that it's almost like now Dennis has to campaign for his life on top of like managing his own number one ally who put him on the block. Who's like, yeah. just tell me it'll be okay. Can you come for me? It's like, I'm the one you, you're, you stabbed me and you're cradling me being like, Oh, can you tell me that it was, it was okay for me to stab you? Like that feels like you're taking on so much more when your life is on the line and you're trying to like scrounge together these votes. But then there's this other thing of like, okay, if I rebuke him, does that automatically turn the entire house off to me? Like we'll see him later in the episode, try to figure out this happy medium of like, okay, apparently if I just say the the syllables Anthony in relative succession, I'm going to get put on the block. So let me try to find something that might help. So I think that having to like, bring Vivek in for the most awkward hug since Dan and Jesse and Big Brother 10 <laughs> is part of the process. House of Villains legend. <laughs> oh boy. So, uh, so yes, uh, Dennis, he goes up, he, he gives, he, and, and I said this in the short we made, but just like this, he's giving everything like this is not only did he give like the most dramatic response ever, but he actually campaigned hard the whole time um actively was making like the most effective campaign he could have made without making the mistake of saying the wrong things to the wrong people he had a very consistent message um really like the biggest thing he should have done was not say anthony's name sooner uh that might have helped him um but uh but like the reality is that he i mean he just he gave everything he is the kind of player i think you ask to come back at some point uh, if this was a show that would continue. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Uh, well, I mean, that's tough. There's a lot of people that won early vetoes and tried hard in Big Brother Canada that that went out. That's a lot not of, all of them fighting for that spot. Not all of them labeled their uh, the person that took them out as the betrayer. So, <laughs> that's uh, true. But I mean, he could have called him Judas and that would have been better. Mm, Topical I, I, time. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that this reference has been made. So apologize. But like, Dennis is so Heisem coded. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man in his 40s who's gay wins the first two vetoes. Pretty honestly <laughs> condescending and intense in his tone when talking with his allies, which gets him put up by his closest allies. I mean, the uh, guys have had a lot more allies in the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I feel also feel like Heisem was more like 
it, it like more intense. I feel like in a, in a way, like I feel like he he wouldn't say stuff as as upfront as the way that mm-hmm. Dennis does. Well, yeah, because not- I, th- I think after Heisen was backdoored, he actually took on the Vivek approach, where he approached everybody. He's like, "If I hurt you in any way, I'm so sorry." Yeah, Heisen was, I think, more emotional and committed in that way. Whereas I, th- I think Dennis would like to play with pure logic, but now is being confronted by the most unserious group of people that have possibly ever been in a Big Brother house together. Yeah, and and like honestly, I, for as much as I think, I, and I think Dennis recognizes this. I think that the biggest mistake, even beyond just like saying Anthony's name, I think still for me comes back to winning that first veto instead of just letting Janine have it. He was safe that week. He had safety. You let Janine win that veto. It really puts a wrench into Anthony's plans. He has to he has to go another direction. He didn't have any good options other than Janine because of the way that week worked. Um, and a number of things could have happened uh, had he just let Janine win that veto. And uh, and instead he won it. Helped put a target on his own back as you know one of his two ultimate wins. Um, and now kind of here he is. And, 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 and the other reality is that even though this happened with Vivek as the HOH and he never expected that and none of us really expected it, this was the plan this week. If almost anybody other than Vivek had won, Dennis would still have been the target for the most part. Um, if anything, this just made it almost not happen and it made it way more dramatic. Uh, so um, this was kind of like an inevitable conclusion, it seems. Mm -hmm. so yeah from that perspective because i've been trying to sort of like and certainly the fandom has done as well compare it to some of the bigger quote-unquote blunders of seasons past right i think the biggest comparison people have made is vivek to fessy i guess that would sort of be similar right i think it's more of that situation than like a maggie uh a maggie convinces howie to put up james situation where it's like okay if anyone in level six had won that HOH, someone like Scotty would probably be going up. And so it was just a matter of convincing someone from the other side to do what they shouldn't. I almost think of it as um, when Jessica got Ramsey's out, Mm -hmm. like a similar vibe. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Yeah. There's like a massive power structure that you're on the outside of. Um, Now it's important to note that like the reason Vivek still feels solid in his decision to do this is that, he feels confident that he is now a part of a new alliance that we saw in the previous episode, himself, Anthony, Spicy, and Kayla. Now, the thing that made this an even worse move is that almost immediately after he did this for that new alliance, half of it, Spicy and Kayla, were like, oh, actually, we didn't want that. (laughs) Actually, what if we still send Goose home? (laughs) Which would have been so wild that he would have put up his best friend in the house for them after they convinced him to do it and then have them immediately change their minds, keep that guy, and send out the pawn. Uh, like, it would have, well, that would have made it the worst move of all time, I think. Yeah, the, 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 the worst HOA train in history. Yes. What's also wild about that, though, is like, in a week, you'll have Victoria giving like a a monologue to a group of people about how she never wanted that and how it was mm-hmm. all Vivek's fault the whole time. And I, I guess we'll never know if they would actually believe her or not without live feeds. But damn, I, mean, I, I love it. I mean, maybe it's just because I have like Big Brother 25 on the brain, but I love that in both of these North American seasons, we have like the people in power, you know, Suri, Izzy, and Big Brother 25, and Victoria here, who will, like, make these unabashed, bold moves, and then be like, but should we do that? Now that I think about it, I don't know if we should do that. And it makes things (laughs) entertaining, at least, from, you know, the the daily drop we get at the veto meeting until eviction, when normally that is the slowest period of the week. But it is absolutely maddening that, yeah, I think that she would authentically believe that, and that apparently they were already saying, hmm, yeah, maybe getting this guy to nominate his closest ally wasn't the best thing for us. So like, you know what? Just get him to do it to prove that you can, you know? <laughs> well, like, this is the thing about Spicy, is that, like, she'll do a thing and then be like, wait, should we have done that? Why did Anthony do that? Screw Anthony. I'm doing something else. 
And then she's right back. I feel like. And then she'll um, go and tell it. And then she'll tell that to the women and be like, screw Anthony. He's making us do these things that we don't want to do. And, and, and we should take the power back. And they'll be like, you think? I mean, we don't want to piss Anthony off. She'll be like, screw Anthony. And they'll be like, you know what? You're right. Maybe we should do something else. And then she'll go to Anthony and be like, Anthony, these women are trifling. All right. They are <laughs> spiraling. They're trying to go against you. And Anthony will be like, oh, man. And she'll be like, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. Well, and the, like, that's the thing, right? They're good friends. Like, they hang out all the time outside. So even when you get into those moments of being annoyed with someone, which is so inevitable when you're literally locked in a house with them without the internet to distract you, you're going to get annoyed with them. But then mm -hmm. you're always going to go back to your bestie. Like, Anthony's going to have these back more than any of these other people will that don't know her. At least for now, anyways. I, yeah, I mean, at least I, I was gonna say at least they're making it a little bit more entertaining. I've seen a lot of comparisons mm -hmm. to BB nineteen and Paul, but I feel like that was just so like you knew what was going to happen every week, and that's exactly what happened. And if you, unless you count like like the the negative, gross, bad stuff that was happening as entertainment, I wouldn't count that as entertainment no. from a strategic standpoint. This, at least, is like it's not clear. It's like it's also too early to call it a steamroll. They could easily fall from grace, but I feel like this is so like what we're saying, like spicy's like, should I do this? Should I not? Let me go to Anthony. Let me do this. And she's kind of like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, 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 uh, making the foundation rocky, like shaky. Mm -hmm. What, uh, what I think will be the most fun is, uh, like V is bringing all of that. Oh, can we do it? Should we do it? What should we do? Let's look at all of these options and discuss them super openly energy that BB can nine had so much of. Right. And Anthony is not liking this energy in the house. He does not yeah. care for this. And I think his one blind spot is he's not realizing that Victoria is the one bringing that energy so like we mm -hmm. could be setting ourselves up for a chaos versus order war between dougie and v which could be extremely compelling and fun but we just don't know if it's actually going to materialize because of their real life friendship right it's interesting because that is arguably like one of the reasons why people like returning player seasons right which is like look at these different play styles let's see how mm -hmm. the hyper competitive out in front spirit of janelle takes on the like very behind the scenes competition phobic dr will and let's see how they mix and match and here yeah to see one of the most chaotic players we have seen especially in power in victoria go up against a guy who ran the season from beginning to end in Anthony on paper should be such a fun matchup, but there is sort of this elephant in the room to your point of like, yeah, it should be a battle. And maybe people are speculating like if, and when hot chocolate breaks down or the directors break down, who's going to take what side. But at the end of the day, I mean, I don't expect Victoria to do to Anthony or vice versa what Vivek did to Dennis as yeah. an example. I, I yeah, think no. there's there's stuff that's larger than the game and outside of the game. And they're both obviously hyper aware of perceptions as returning players that they would know like, okay, that's not the thing I want to do for like my longevity in life, let alone this game. Yeah, I mean- And that's why it should be all stars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it, it, it's, it's true. Like Anthony and, and Spicy V are two like polar opposite forces uh, in like how they play the game. Anthony is famous for being the glue that holds things together, that contains, that structures. Um, and and Spicy V, uh, like, she just explodes. Like, she blows everything that she touches up. Um, like, if you are aligned with Spicy V, you're more in danger from her than if you were not aligned with Spicy <laughs> V. So Spicy V and Anthony being part of the same structure is having this weird, like, interaction a uh, chemical reaction where Spicy is trying to blow things up. She's trying to blow up hot chocolate. She's trying to blow up the directors. But but Anthony is containing those things. So all Spicy ends up blowing up are the things that Anthony's not touching, that he's not a part of, the women. Um, and so boom goes Janine. Boom goes Donna. Bye-bye, Dennis. And... The latest victim uh, who's currently taking the heat for a lot of what happened this week, Bailey, uh, is 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 maybe in trouble here this week. And so I think the thing is that that Spicy V 
She's not ignorant of this fact. She sees what's happening. She's like, wait a minute. Why does this keep happening? All of my people that Anthony doesn't touch, they're going home. How is he doing this? How is, I don't understand why Anthony keeps coming out on top. And she's getting annoyed with it, um, but also still loyal to Anthony. And so she, it's like, it's this wild just mix of like these things. And at some point, something has to give, I think. I don't think that these forces can, can coexist uh, forever. I think that at some mm -hmm. point it's going to combust. Uh, and the question is like, how and when? Um, now, this new HOH results um, could help heat things up, but for now should keep things in place because, uh, you know, Goose is somebody that that should be wanting to maintain the structure of the directors, which is what Spicy V has tried to blow up over the last like two weeks. Um, <laughs> so uh, so I think we have to wait and see what happens there. Um, but basically what happened this week is that Spicy, uh, you know, Kayla and Avery and Bailey were all considering this idea of maybe we should keep Dennis because he's a number for us and we can't keep letting Anthony get his way and keep his pieces because they're frustrated with Lexus because she's close to Matt and Matt is under, uh, you know, Anthony's control. And if Anthony has Matt and he has Tola and now he has Vivek and now all of this stuff is happening, then like we can't just let him, you know, maintain control. We need to keep our people, people like Dennis and Todd, the people that we are close with. And so they really heavily considered this idea and ultimately, we don't know exactly why they decided against it because we didn't show it on the drops. But I think the primary reason was that it wasn't really the right time to draw a line. Um, and, and that's kind of the right call, like uh, to draw a line and keep Dennis, um, you know, it, it is not really necessarily what you want to do here because you still have Dennis to deal with. And he's a very capable player who will recognize that he needs to turn on you as soon as you're in power. Um, and so like, there is some, some decent reasoning there. Uh, but, but ultimately, uh, they decided against it. And, uh, and that means that going into this HOH competition, they were looking according to them at targeting Matt. Like that was the, the next play for all of the women. If any of them had won, they were saying that they wanted to try to take Matt out of the game if possible, um, to weaken Anthony. Uh, and they didn't win. I think we saw that Spicy threw the competition. We'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, her reaction being very blatantly <laughs> like, I don't know why I'm in the final two of this competition. I shouldn't <laughs> be in the final two of this competition. Yeah. Well, she almost threw it then when everyone I think she else tried to throw went it. out. She, she yeah. said it true and was like, it's true. Switched to false. And then switched back to true and was mouthing like, what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> Isn't why that am her I doing game this? Play in a nutshell? <laughs> Yeah, I was yes. gonna say. Yeah, well, that's no, that's yeah. Period. That's what she does. She asks why she's doing it as she you know presses next. But the but I guess the point is that uh, through all of this discussion, Spicy V did go to Anthony, and she said, "Hey, Anthony, the the girls are are flipping out. Uh, they're spiraling, and Bailey's really pushing. Uh, Bailey and Kayla are really pushing." Um, actually, I think she said Bailey and uh, it doesn't matter that the women are really pushing it, throwing most of the blame on Bailey. Uh, and then, you know, Anthony then goes to Vivek and he says, hey, apparently Bailey and Kayla are trying to push to keep Dennis. And Vivek is like. Kayla, after after what we I did this for you guys, and then they they're going to do this. Uh, and, and on top of that, in the conversation that I mentioned between Vivek and Dennis, Dennis said to Vivek, I know you were the one that got Kayla to use the veto. Um, and, and Vivek is like, excuse me, <laughs> did she tell you that? <laughs> um, so Vivek is, is a bit upset, but I think later in the drop, it seems like he talked to Kayla and she convinced him, no, that's not happening. Um, and he was like, I think it's mainly Bailey. And I think that they're just appeasing Bailey. Uh, so basically Bailey's taking all the heat for this yet again. Um, and even though she did have a conversation with Goose during his campaign, where he said that he didn't want to nominate anybody that all, had already been nominated and that he wasn't planning to nominate her. It, it is not a, a far-fetched idea to imagine that as soon as Goose wins this HOH, Anthony Vivek 
everybody will be in his ear saying, guess who was leading the charge trying to flip the vote against you just a couple of days ago? It was none other than Bailey. Well, sounds like it's Baylight savings time once again. <laughs> An- Oh you were sitting on that. I just for like so a little bit. Literally the, problem, the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> is it like I want to call HR, but I know they won't do anything. About She's it. sleeping in the bedroom. Do you need to wake her up? <laughs> yeah, wake your wife up. I need to talk to HR. <sighs> Oh my God. Well, and that's the thing too, where it just, it's so frustrating as an outside viewer because we're seeing like, if someone's being scapegoated by literally the whole house, they're obviously not the one pushing for things. They're obviously not in a position to even make anything happen if they wanted to. But then I think you just get so swept up in it that you're like, okay, yeah, well, everyone's saying this is what happened. So this must be what happened. And it's just like, have you not noticed everyone in the house lying to everyone day after day. That's the thing. If this week is any indication, how this will will happen is Spicy will go to Goose and confirm the story. Yeah, Bailey was trying to get you out. You should take out Bailey. Then go back to the women and be like, guys, we need to save Bailey. Um, And like, how can we get the votes to save Bailey? And one the problem is, though, is like, (laughs) Bailey? does not know how to sit down and be quiet. She does not have that uh, in her which is, you know, in, arsenal, which, which I love. I love and I respect and I connect with it because I think I'd be cussing people out just as mm-hmm. much as, as Bailey in these situations. But V is going to go to Goose and say all of this. Goose is going to talk to Bailey because they do have an, like, an East Coast connection and be like, well, this is, you know, what's going on. And this is what I was said. And then Bailey's going to cuss out V and V is going to cuss out Bailey. And that is the fight I want to see. But I don't know what it's going to mean for the nomination. I don't think Goose will rat out Spicy V. I think that he is, he knows to keep his mouth shut about Alliance. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I could also see Bailey putting it together though, because she saw like everything that went down last (laughs) week. I think. With with this cast, yeah, the bar's low. Well, I mean, like, I don't expect, like, listen, you give me two returnees and 12 newbies. I'm like, okay, they're fodder anyways. Like, I don't have, I don't expect them. Like, they just don't have the experience to match up, even if they have, like, the natural game play, right? So I'm just like, whatever. I I don't have a rooting interest. I don't care what happens. But I like when Bailey yells. <laughs> I Oh, my God. The, the, the possessed voice she had in that Sunday episode. <laughs> yes. Where she goes, Vivek. Like, I, like. She was legitimately, I had to get an old priest and a young priest in the house via skip just to like I just get her need, out of there. Lavina, I sorry, I have a clip edit request. I need that moment right there where Michael's Vivek. I need you to put the red devil emoji over his face just when he says Wait, do it again. Vivek. Everyone stay quiet. Do it again. Vivek. Perfect. Someone t- give me the time code in the chat. Someone tweet it to me. Perfect. It's done. (laughs) No, but I was going to say like, sorry, Taryn. I was just going to say like Bailey cannot leave for, thank you, Sam Moore. He just gave me the time code in the private chat. Um, (laughs) She cannot leave for my sake because I tweeted, I've, I have not been tweeting like a, like a ton about Big Brother Canada this season. The only times I tweet is about Bailey. The very first time I saw her, I like I watched the premiere. I kind of fell off a little bit and then I caught back up recently up until now. And I was just like, who's this blonde woman? Who I just see this blonde woman screaming on my timeline every single day. Like, if no, this that's was, me, Lavina. I'm sorry. It's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. <laughs> Um, no, but like, I think if, if she leaves, it would be a huge detriment to me as well as Canada in the U S. Yeah. So, um, I mean the thing, the thing I think about like Bailey, like figuring spicy out is that like it's spicy is just so illogical that it's so hard to see what she's doing. Right. Like it's when they're like, oh, somebody's leaking. How does how does Anthony always know what we're talking about? Like when when spicy is the thing being leaked half the time, you don't expect her to be the one leaking. It. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I think the, the only way to see through it is the fact that somehow, despite everything leaking, 
and Spicy being the most vocal person that's against Anthony, she's also never the one that gets in trouble for it. Uh, like that's maybe where you should where you should be like, wait a minute, what's happening here? But I can totally see why like they they don't recognize that like the person doing the thing is also the person leaking the thing. Yeah, and it's tough because I think that goes back to Kristen's point about like, I don't want to say naivete, but I, I do think that like, believe it or not, it's week three. And I, I did feel bad for everything that happened with Janine, but like it made so much sense to me in week one that like everyone's going to believe Anthony's story that like, oh, you've been spreading my name out because they're days, single digits days within playing the game of Big Brother for the first time. Like you don't go into even a game like Big Brother if you're a super duper fan, like automatically discounting every single thing that's told to you. Like just as a human being, you are trying to rely on some base truths that are said so you can build some sort of structure to it. And so I give kudos to Anthony for benefiting from that. And it's something similar as well. I think it's just like uh, a core tenant of humanity that's like, okay, I'm assuming the person that's telling me this information is leaking. It's not the person that's doing it because it's illogical. And I think what people are not necessarily putting together is that like they are facing an inherently illogical person. I, Kate, I've just, while we've been talking, I feel like I have the new analogy for V's gameplay, okay? She's a tornado. She's spinning. She is tossing shit up and down. And you get you get caught up. You get dragged into the tornado like a, like a lawn chair would get like pulled up and start spinning okay. around, right? And for whatever reason, Anthony's the one who benefits from all of the destruction. <laughs> Anthony, Anthony as uh, is an insurance salesman. Yeah, I was literally just gonna say that. <laughs> Can we talk about Anthony's goodbye message? Uh... I saw some people, people mad about, about it. Messages? I'm sorry. I saw some people mad about that. I was like, "Do y'all want villains or not?" This That's is like a they don't. Villain. They say they do, but they don't. It's it's the thing about people were complaining about like, oh, when people get voted out of Survivor, why does everyone say thanks, good game? Like, th this is what we want, right? Especially yeah. for pre-jury, like you want somebody gloating. Here's what I think the true uh, thing is about like the people that are saying like we want villains is that I think the reality is that people want to be mad. Um, so like the same people that are like, oh, that's, I can't believe, he's the worst for doing that. I can't believe they lied to that woman on Survivor. Like those are the same people that still want villains. They just want to be outraged so that they can hate somebody. Like that's, like, that's part of the viewing experience for them. I and and here's the thing. That's fine too. It's fine to like, you're supposed to kind of hate a villain sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think I like to root villains on. Um, uh, but, uh, but I think that like a villain isn't, isn't really doing its job, uh, if you're not kind of mad at him at, at some point. Not everybody has the capacity to be like, oh my God, that was a little bit uncalled for. I love it. Do say more, right. do more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, it was just like, it was petty. It was dramatic. It's the stuff I love about reality television. Like Anthony, laid it all out and it came also like i i love also the sequence that they use i'm sure that that dennis got you know a good amount but the fact that the four we were shown was like vivek for the up tea time being like please be my friend check yes or no and then you have matt <laughs> and victoria back to back saying listen i had to get rid of you only because the sole reason was that you mentioned anthony's name and then cut to anthony be basically being like aria stark another name checked off the list <laughs> good night dennis like that was a, just a fantastic sequence of events yeah. and I think really confirmed to him, unfortunately, his worst fears about this game. Yeah, and like a lot of people are, are talking about, you know, BB-19 in terms of like the structure of the game and how it's like a returning player kind of dominating new players. Um, but like, I, I think some key differences are, you know, A, uh, you know, Anthony does have like a good conversation with Dennis in the house before release where he's like, listen, I, I respect. Like, uh, you had to go because you're, like, one of the smartest people here. Um, and in his goodbye messages, willing to own his villainy, uh, where, you know, Paul would have been like, I don't know what happened. I, I don't know why you're sitting there. I don't know what happened. <laughs> like, uh, like I, I, for me, it's like at least Anthony is giving us this. Like, if you're going to play an extremely boring game at times, uh, at least you're giving personality in terms of like yeah. your persona 
uh, and, and giving something one thing? for people to like get their sink their teeth into. Yeah. Can, can Anthony just give like he's had three for him? Can he just do one for us now? <laughs> yeah, I just want I just want one <laughs> to, for to us. To be fair, he was perfectly willing to take to give one last week, but Spicy was like, no. <laughs> Hold my beer. <laughs> okay, so okay, so fair enough. So he did one for him, and then tried to do one for us, but he said no. Now and he's, he's like, done another for and him. He's like, you know what? It's not our anymore. turn. It's our turn. <laughs> I, I will even steam roll. Then yeah, help us out. I will even say outside of the goodbye message, like the editing behind the whole sequence of him, you know, slowly marinating, even though it was fast for us, Vivek to nominate Dennis. Like even just the shrug was really good. Again, I know that. Canada and US DRs tend to be like a little stilted, uh, especially early on. But like this guy knows what he's doing in many, many ways. And I love that he was, you know, working a lot of the bravado in the confessional. I, even Paul, as much as we lampoon his goodbye messages, like even he would have these moments where he's like, did I really let everyone throw a running competition to a one a one legged woman? Like those are the moments that you sort of glom onto, right? Where yeah. you kind of look around and say, yeah, I can't believe this shit is happening either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there's there's another thing we should talk about because we talked about it last week and this week it feels like it's even stronger because week one, Janine on her way out said Donna is winning this game. Oh, week no. two, Donna on her way out said Dennis is winning this game. Then Vivek won the HOH and I was like, okay, curse lifted. No. Obviously. And then what happened? The curse was that strong. <laughs> and so now, Dennis, on his way out, says, Tola is winning this game. Uh, that, Kate, yeah, go, you go first. I, I feel like extra sure that Tola is in deep trouble because they showed the scene about yep. where Tola comes from and, you know, the difficult circumstances his family dealt with to get to Canada in the first place. And he hasn't been on the show, right? So for him to, it's like, okay, now we have to show them who Tola is because he is going to be in big trouble. This because he's been cursed. Home, right? <laughs> like, cause the, the, that's the thing too. Like in the, in an age of digital dailies and no live feeds, we don't necessarily know if like maybe the eviction happened early today. Maybe things are going to be on an accelerated Ooh, timeline because it's a long is, weekend. This is, like, we eviction? Don't, this we is don't... a Saw movie. Like this was all recorded a week ago. <laughs> Not a Saw movie. <laughs> the winner it's is very... actually locked in a safe somewhere. <laughs> Oh my god. It's very like um I, I don't know how familiar you guys are with like drag race. I feel like mm -hmm. before a queen gets eliminated like Mike, like you get like when a queen gets eliminated that episode, they have kind of like a they they tell like mm -hmm. a story about their lives and stuff. So everyone's like, oh, she's going home, you know? Yeah. It's kind of like that. Another thing too was like when when they showed that DR of Tola saying wow, everyone's just going after each other. I'm just laying back and chilling. I was like, who are you? Like, I'm sorry, who have we met? Like, that was crazy. I was like, well, let's let's guy? let's talk about targets for Goose because Goose mm -hmm. is a loyal member of the directors. Uh, I think that he would be loath to touch anybody in that alliance. That leaves only four people outside of it. Uh, Whoa, well, but Vivek? wait. Yes. He's been a pawn for the directors, and he might feel that True. it's time for one of them to repay the favor. Certainly possible, but he does have Vivek sitting right there, who just True. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so outside of the directors, Vivek, Bailey, Todd, and Tola are the four people that he could theoretically target and or put on the block. Um, of those four, the women who just gave up Dennis willingly, I think will be pushing very hard to protect both Bailey and Todd. Those are two people they feel they have as numbers. Mm. Uh, Anthony will not want to let go of Vivek or Tola, I think, right now. So what I think, I think it will be another kind of proxy war. But I think that, like, the, the easiest target to push for many of the women would be Tola. Um, you know, like, it, it could be Vivek too. But, like, I, I do think that Kayla and, and Spicy might feel good enough with Vivek that they have this like mini alliance with him. Whereas Tola doesn't really have anyone. A lot of people just see Tola as an Anthony pawn. And so Tola seems like a no blood on my hands way to weaken Anthony. And if they're pushing Tola a lot onto Goose and Anthony doesn't want to fight back too hard because it's not worth fighting this battle, then it's really not impossible 
for the curse to come for Tola this week. Yeah, that's so interesting because he's been pushed the past couple weeks, I feel, as again, this 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 symbol almost he's like it's almost like he's not even like a person in the house it's more so this idea of well you you basically take a shot at anthony with this and yeah if anthony's trying to face this idea of like either i keep this guy in or i anger you know half the people i'm aligned with then yeah maybe it does happen though tola i'm trying to remember has he played in a veto i feel like that's another thing they were trying to target him because he was like possibly a physical threat too yeah, a lot of people were hyping him. Mean, he was hyping himself up, himself up as a, like a, a comp threat. But then in the first veto, he performed very poorly, the one that Dennis won. Um, so I think people are still kind of thinking that he might come in to play at some point, but he has not really performed up to standard yet. Yeah, and also the vetoes, uh, to the show's credit, have also been like pretty good at even in week two, where it was like there's a very physical component, but like there's something puzzly at the end. So it's not like it's going to be like a complete almost big brother s us esque right run back and forth as many times as you can and then you win where tola would probably be a little bit better at that than others now there is one other curse that i should bring up because it's it's slid under the radar a little bit we've talked about the who's going to win the game curse but uh the who's going to win the game curse has coincided with another fairly strong curse and it's the curse of puya's draft team <laughs> oh no Poor yes, Puya. dig his oh, grave no. while he's not even here. Puya, even himself. Puya's draft team, just for everyone's knowledge, uh, consists of Janine, Donna, Dennis, and Vivek. This is, uh, <laughs> what was that Big Brother 13 Alliance? The, 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 the regulators. regulators. The regulators. This could be the regulators of Puya's draft team. <laughs> so as far as i'm concerned we have two different curses they're both three for three which one will win is tola gonna go home this week or is vivek gonna go home this week or will bailey go home and break both curses i don't know let's sorry hope not to... sorry puya yeah <laughs> literally sorry puya i don't want the curse to, to be man. broken quite yet <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean what no matter how much we felt odd about like the way the content was brought in, whatever purpose it was serving, like, God, what a harrowing story. I mean, mm -hmm. one, of, one of the reasons I love Big Brother Canada so much since the very beginning is I feel like they have done such a good job and really a lot of Canadian reality television in like talking about the story of first generation, second generation immigrants and uh, the idea that like, Canada truly is as much as America calls itself the melting pot. Canada too has brought in so many different cultures and well, really highlighted we don't call it. it a melting pot. They Canada actually kind of makes fun of that concept that oh you're melting because you expect everybody to, you know, conform and mm. become one substance. Canada is called the cultural mosaic because Ooh. the whole like cultural identity obviously like not a hundred percent accurate obviously canada has its problems as well but it's they kind of look down on the states as like oh no we accept people to bring in their identities and still be canadian however they are as people like you don't have to conform to a specific identity uh to be canadian is is mm. kind of the concept there i do recall that cindy with an s at one point also called it a salad bowl is that also a common term um I have heard that less, but I think it's the it's the same vibe. Well, uh, Arissa did let us know that the executive veto is finally going to come into play, I believe, starting next week. So it won't be this week, but the following week. Um, mm. So. I mean, there's really not a lot to speculate on there. I mean, you say that, but like I more so take the other side of like, I think they're isn't a lot to speculate there because i don't know i take it at face value i see executive veto i think executive order and i think oh yeah this is gonna be like diamond power veto yeah. style blood veto if you will and so you know well, I, I mean, do makes... we think do we think it would have the same powers as that or just similar powers hmm <laughs> i it could be so I think next Wednesday it will be announced like a vote to give the executive veto to someone like the BB can three have not they would do that situation. before noms even happen. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. And like, we won't know. We won't, we won't even know who the HOH is before the um, voting closes would be my suspicion. And then it will be, you know, some kind of superpower veto. I mean, if there was a vote right now, who would win it? Oh, I, it's one of the returning players. Like, by far. Oh, I, I think like V. I think V would win. They it both have such Anthony. like villainous edits for the season so far. But they though. also have the biggest edits of the season. True. Like that eliminates any... so much of the cast. Maybe Bailey. I was gonna say who's like like maybe like the East Coast people. Like, but you it's know how hard because there's so many. Who is Marty's fan base voting? For? I mean, I would say yeah. Todd, but he's barely been in the show. And well, I also can't but understand a word he from... says. Oh, the man is the man is human tryptophan. I love it. Just like his voice <laughs> no, but... is so soothing. I want him to put me to sleep. Todd is the one from Labrador, right? So Newfoundland and Labrador are the ones that kind of get the most support i think if you're looking at all of the the east coast because the east coast people are gonna vote they, they don't have to know who todd is they just have to see a post that says like oh this is our buy from labrador and then they'll vote for him i, I mean i think also I, I look as simply as like you know the way we've done popular votes in big brother us before i mean there's a reason why in Survivor 22, they brought Redemption Island in with Rob and Russell of like, here's a little bit of padding in case one of our returning players gets voted out early. You have like a guaranteed three episodes. Here it's a little bit further in, but it's like, hey, if one of our returning players happens to end up on the block, oh, look at this. Here's a possible like coup d'etat diamond veto that they could possibly win to save themselves. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of Todd, there was like a, a small little side plot that they they almost showed in this episode that I really enjoyed from the <laughs> from the drops, which was that um, prior to the ceremony, Todd went to 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 Dennis and he was like, something's up, man. I don't know. Uh, ba Bailey's saying weird things to me. I just feel like something bad is going to happen at this ceremony. Uh, and, and, and Dennis was like, no, I don't think so. I think you're reading into it. Don't worry about it. I was like, I, I, I think something bad is going to happen. I think I might be in trouble. I don't know. Um, then the veto ceremony happens and then Dennis has his confrontation with Vivek and then we see this in the episode pieces of it Todd comes into that pool room pool table room and they showed the like the other parts of that conversation but the thing that stood out to me was that Todd comes in and he's basically like see I told you mm. and Dennis Ooh. is like yeah you know I didn't see it but man I can't believe he did that and Todd's like yeah, and I saw it, and you didn't believe me. Um, <laughs> okay. Nothing more attractive than someone kicking you while you're down with an "I told you so." <laughs> like that was very like the only it, it, like the conversation lasted like five minutes with that being the only thing on Todd's mind, and Dennis like just not. Like, it was, was very, so, funny and that was me. the conversation right where Dennis is like, "You're all playing for third, not even second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were having two completely separate conversations with themselves in that moment. <laughs> uh, but uh but yes um what's gonna happen with this executive veto i i don't think we can really know yet and and without even knowing like who the hoh will be or what the noms will be i think there's a lot uh to be left uh the the, the, the unknown there um but uh but in the meantime goose is the hoh and as we said things should be fairly simple but knowing that spicy v is in the house they could get wild. Like, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, at the very least, this is just like more, again, like fodder for Spicy and the rest of the women to like get the heat even more on them. Like, is Bailey going to be in trouble? Are they going to need to do something drastic to try to save Bailey? Um, or will they go even more aggressive and try to actively control the target, get Goose to turn on? matt or lexus or something along those lines or do they take the safer play as we talked about and target cola um there's a lot of different things there if it is a scenario like say bailey versus vivek on the block vivek as a pawn against bailey um could the women do what they almost did this week to save dennis could they save bailey um and the answer is is kind of uh oh i don't think so anymore they need five votes they have four um you know spicy kayla avery todd they need lexus and guess who hasn't been talking to lexus for like two weeks now so, all of the women 
Well, I was going to mm-hmm. say, like, how much of that is uh, to blame for it? Because, again, the way it's been sort of perceived to us is like, oh, well, she doesn't approach us. She's just cuddled up in Matt's lap the entire time. But it does take two, or in this case, like, six to tango. How has she been feeling about it? Has she noticed it? I would firmly say this is, like, 1,000% the fault of the rest of the women. <laughs> because because from literal day one of the drops, they were like, we don't like Lexi. Uh, yeah. we don't, we don't think Lexus will be down mm. for women. Um, and Lexus, to be fair, is kind of like a, the, the kind of person that is like, I mean, I'm working with the women, but like, I'm also chill with the guys. Uh, like I get along well with guys. Um, that said, she's never indicated at all that she wouldn't be down to work with the women long term. Uh, they, but they have like more and more and more like just excluded her from all group conversations. Uh, they, they actively like, we can't tell her anything because they're afraid that she's going to bring it back. Um, and the reality is again, like spicy is the one saying most of this stuff, but spicy is the one who's actually bringing the info back to Anthony. Mm -hmm. And then like, uh, and I don't think this is like super intentional, but then blaming it on, on Lexus for having done it. Um, and so, uh, like it, it, it's put, I think Lexus in a position where, I do think we count her as a number on the Matt and Dougie side of things, not necessarily by her choice, but by the sort of premature choice made by the rest of the women to mm-hmm. just sort of ice her out. Um, it, it's yeah. like the women were so scared that something would happen to prevent them from being able to work together that they invented all of yes. these scenarios mm. that result in them not being able to work together because they're so worried about it not working they, out. Yeah, they created Projection the thing they were bit. worried about. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's fun. Self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, so we'll see what happens there. And, and it's again, it's frustrating because it's like, I get it. You're worried that she's too close to Matt or whatever. But like, you can see the difference where, where Anthony is is happy. Anthony's like, yes, Matt is with Lexus. That's perfect. I can use that connection to my advantage. Whereas the women are like, oh, no, she's getting close to Matt. We're going to assume that Matt is going to take precedent in that relationship and that she will do what he wants instead of being like this is great we can use her to pull matt to us um and 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 i think again like this is kind of the result so far at least Mm -hmm. in the current dynamic well and it really makes me think and obviously i don't know these women so i can't actually speak to it but then it makes me think oh do these women not have friends that are women and then i'm like oh my god i'm doing exactly what they're doing to lexus it's like, why is this happening <laughs> oh boy it's a slippery slope there oh it's a tough it's tough out here it's yeah tough stuff on these bb streets where would do we think we're doing a jury of of seven again so jury so things are I know that's really weird if jury started now, right? Maybe it's the executive veto. You can replace one jury member. Uh, But (laughs) yeah, because Dennis complained that he he didn't even make the jury. And, you know, we're still a couple weeks out from that. But yeah, if the next couple boots, if we have like a Bailey boot and then uh, I don't even know, like uh, I'm trying to think what would be the the worst possible outcome. I'm like the women. I want to make the worst possible thing manifest until we actually see it. No, can we manifest something good? Like, I just want fun i want to manifest yeah. fun and unseriousness and dougie at least having to fight to get what he wants i don't want it to be so easy for him i would argue that he is as long as spicy v is there he's going to be fighting that's interesting <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but he, it he, seems he, effortless so far i want to see <laughs> the exertion he's automatically he playing on hard mode with her being in the house he did outline this to someone i might have been vivek recently i think it was vivek <clears throat> where he was like when i'm aligned with somebody i don't entertain conversations about like them being targets and stuff like that because i know that that like starts to gain momentum and i want to make sure it's shut down as much as possible and this is true he does this for spicy all the time um constantly talking her up and, and trying to prevent people from even mentioning her as a target whereas <laughs> spicy actively talks about anthony as a target and creates these bits of momentum which again has caused her more problems than than benefits because then then anthony has to target the people she's talking to which means she's losing allies mm-hmm. um but uh but but anthony hasn't found that out yet uh, he hasn't realized that she is doing the complete opposite of what she's telling him she's, she's doing, 
blaming all of it on the rest of the women. Um, and so there is still a lot of that there. And this notion of Anthony being a target has caught on. Like this is a real thing. And this is something that the women talked about this week. Not only saving Dennis potentially, not only targeting Matt, but should we maybe even target Anthony himself? And even somebody like Avery was talking about it. She talked to Spicy about targeting Anthony and what they would do and how they would handle it. Um, and now they mentioned that they would want to wait until the jury started uh, in the in the car with the other women. They mentioned that Matt should be the first one to go, that he's more threatening. Um, but the fact that this is even out there at all is certainly not something that Anthony would want. And it is very dangerous for his game. The fact that like Anthony's trying to play this like Boston Rob kind of thing right. where it's like, you say my name, you're against me, you go home and put that fear into everyone's head so that they don't say his name. But there's one person who's not afraid to say his name, and that's Spicy V. And she's helping other people not be afraid of saying it. So he's shutting it down, and she's, you know, bringing it up. Mm -hmm. And then it's it's this big mess. It's so messy, uh, even though it's also so structured. It's it's the combination of the both of them. It's a rocky well, foundation. Period. Well, and then the thing, though, with with V, like she came into the season saying, I want to be loyal. I want to have my team. I don't want to go back and forth like I did last time. But her natural instincts are not to have a team and to be loyal to them to the end. So she like has all the best intentions to be loyal. And then she kind of like goes down the path of, oh, this feels natural to me. And then she like gets halfway down. She's like, oh, Crap, that's not what I'm supposed to do. I need to be loyal to Anthony. Let me like undo I'm telling all of that. you, it's the closer you get to Spicy V, the more reasons she will find to want you gone. Like you can't yeah. like, <laughs> like yeah, she the more the more you... the more you talk with her, the more she she overthinks yeah. things. And it's like if, hey, you, if you just I... never speak a word to her, she'll be like, Yeah, he seems fine. She'll be yeah. like, Oh, I forgot you. they existed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so oh, it, it ends up working perfectly. I mean, it's it's such an interesting proposition. And I mean, I mean, I would love for this season to continue on the roller coaster that it's been, despite the fact that, again, you might look at like a voting chart and you're thinking this was a, a you know, 10-0 vote tonight. Oh, the returnees had their way. Like, still a wild week. I'm hoping that this is like the storm before the inevitable calm before the storm at the end. If this ends up being a season where it's like, we have some wild few first weeks then like maybe starting this week, we settle into a couple of like unfortunate easy boots. And then finally the returnees turn on each other, uh, whether it be through proxies or directly. And then things get interesting again. Like that's still a good season of big brother. In my opinion, I haven't disliked anything so far. I think even to Kirsten's point, if it does feel like, you know, these, these people didn't really have a chance walking in once Anthony and Victoria did. I'm still entertained by a lot of them, what they're bringing. They have certainly brought so much mess on their own, let alone with the returnees guiding them, also guiding them in said mess as well, leading by example. And so I'm holding out hope. You know, I'm waiting for Big Brother Canada to really, you know, disappoint me with like a week that hasn't felt uh, incredibly eventful. And maybe I'm jinxing myself, but I've been loving what I've been seeing so far. I, I do think that the the way that they've edited the season so far has not helped. Um, like, I know that there's a lot of disappointment in the air about, like, the results of the week. And I think that, um, like, even down to the dailies, they are intentionally cutting things out and leaving out large chunks, in or seemingly, in order for us to go into the eviction being like, Ooh, maybe it will flip. Uh. Um, and I think that like the Big Brother audience, especially, they don't they don't mess with that. Like, uh, like they don't like it when you try to get their hopes up, especially when you then dash those hopes. Uh, and so like this notion of them being like, oh, look, we're adding more tension and more excitement to our evictions is I think I think it backfires for this audience and especially. Um, and I think they'd be better off, like just kind of like letting us know. And, and in particular, and we've, I've talked about this already, but like, um, you know, there was better stuff, I think that we could have seen in this particular episode. I think it was a fine episode. Okay. Um, I think that like, I mean, I'm talking about this, like all this gold from the, from the mm. drop, um, and very little of it was in the episodes. We saw the initial confrontation with Vivek. That was great. Um, and then we saw some of Vivek's can uh, some of Dennis's campaigning, which I thought was you know important to show. But like what we didn't see was like 
the like very real conversations about going after Anthony, about like maybe we really should do this, uh, and about perhaps why they ultimately didn't, and the like the uh, like the dramatic conversation between Vivek and Dennis, and it just felt like uh, instead of trying to like leave us on this like oh man he made some good points uh, like cut to the vote. Um, like, I feel like there was a more efficient use of time there, uh, and, and we don't need to always try to, like, hype up anything could happen, especially when the third vote is Bailey and she votes Dennis out. Like, that, you know, like, that, that lasted, like, two yeah. seconds. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, poor Riss is like, oh, well, it, maybe someone else might vote <laughs> in the minority. Nope. Okay, we're just gonna keep going, though. I felt like Arissa even sounded kind of disappointed when she was saying, well, it's going to be unanimous. Like her, she sounded <laughs> yeah. so like, like down about it. It's like, girl, same. She's, She's one of us. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's tough. And that also, I think, does come sort of part and parcel sometimes with the Big Brother game. There certainly has been conversations about like, how do you get rid of that? Is it a matter of casting? Is it a matter of not revealing the vote totals? But sometimes that just sort of comes with the territory of like, hey, people want to be on the same page. No one wants to stick out because especially early on in this game, you find any excuse to cling on to in those early HOHs. It could put you up on the block as we're seeing this season. So yeah, it, it was it was rough to watch. And I, I do see your point here. And they're like the entire conceit and the reason why people very understandably had consternation against the removal of live feeds in the first place is like, we want a more objective sense of quote unquote truth of what's happening to build our own uh, our own sort of narratives from it and see exactly what's happening. This digital dailies does seem to scheme from what I'm hearing more so towards just like almost like deleted scenes from the episodes, right? That it's not yeah, like even... a preview of the episode mm -hmm. plus some deleted scenes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That like it's not even necessarily. Oh, hey, here's everything that you need to know about what's been happening the past few days. It's mo it's more so like huh? this might be happening in the house right now uh it's it's like they extended the episode runtime but then shrunk it in the live broadcast on the flip yeah. side i think the true like engagement and excitement for an eviction episode is the live hoh which we did get tonight um because that's true uncertainty anything can happen somebody's gonna win it's high stakes it's high drama and and we saw that play out like uh, even as it came down to like the last six and it was like Kayla and uh, Spicy versus basically four people uh, who wouldn't really do much. Um, and then Spicy like trying to throw ends up with Goose who's like, yes, yes, let's go. Um, and then and then like very obviously throws it to, to Goose and now it's like, well, what is Goose going to do? Like this is like this is Big Brother watching a live HOH competition. Um, you know, it, it, like that we don't need always for the vote to be this like, Ooh, what could happen, especially when we have the new HOH competition that we can look forward to. So I think that's the formula. That's the that's the successful mm -hmm. formula for this show. Um, and so I think they they, they got it kind of half right in this episode, I think. All right. Yeah. Anything else we should talk about before we wrap up here? Oh, uh, no. I, 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 all I had else written down was that uh, Karen's cameo was like Tanya in the White Lotus. Um, during oh, the video I was thinking White Lotus. Karen, Karen truly is such a queen. And when it was announced that there's going to be two secret all stars, I texted Karen and I said, you'd better be one of these secret all stars. And then when my text turned blue, I like fell to my knees and oh, screamed. No. Like, no. Imagine it was Karen and Anthony. Right? Like incredible. Oh, that's God. that's cinema. Put, oh my god. Put her back in the house. I don't care. She could be the only returning with all new. I don't care. Put Karen back in the house. That's <laughs> she, all I want. Anthony would have been like, yo, it's the two of us. It's gonna be legendary. And then she would have been in the diary room, like <laughs> sky. <laughs> To the dark room to his face. Yeah, her new Kevin. She'd be Martin. like Anthony effing Douglas. Like, well, yeah, we know that she, she loves to go for the buff guys. If she won that first HOH against Anthony, he's going right up, even if he's safe. She's like, nope, I'm breaking the rules. Executive veto. You're going up. <laughs> her Kevin blanket. Oh my the god. The towel or whatever. And her calling like, out Todd to his face for being a recruit, like love. Yeah. Absolutely ballsy, and that's what we love about Kevin. A uh, Kevin. Oh, Ke <laughs> Karen oh my God. <laughs> well, Kevin, I, I had Kevin about... on the brain because apparently, is he going to be on next week? I think I saw someone in the oh, chat saying that. Oh, I don't know. Oh, 
I've been loving that as well. I know that, you know, BB can 10, they made a big deal off of this is the 10th season, but I do like that now, listen, they're, they're sort of slow rolling us on bringing back past players. They're clearly not going to do a full all-star season, but I do love these randos coming in for veto competition, either hosting or just drop ins. Mm-hmm. I will I also say, love it's just people's family in the Wendy's window. <laughs> see, I'm the opposite. I like I don't care about your family. Uh, the only family visit I ever cared about was when Chris, the brain specialist, right. didn't recognize his mom. <laughs> and I think that's what they're going for, right? Like I think so they're hoping true. that happens again. Okay, but uh, Kevin seeing his his girlfriend and BB Can Ten at the time, like that was really cute. Do you guys not remember yeah. that? that? At Wendy's? No, st- stuff like that when she had brought Wendy's. like no, the it... fake ring. Yeah, I, I think that was to... during like um like a final five like random yeah. ask, right? When it, they it, it was like the partition. similar vibes to BB Can 2 when they could see their family, but they had to give mm. something up for the rest of the season oh and they couldn't God. touch each other yeah. through the glass. I cry every time. Or um I cry. Or, or Andrew and BB Can one where they did the challenge where they had to freeze and then his twin brother came in and like stood yeah. directly in front of his face. Who was yeah. the dog who had the dog? Someone had like a dog and the dog was like jumping on them. <laughs> oh, that was that. Wait, was that in season five when their family came in? I I don't know why that. Someone had a dog. There it was their mother holding the dog. Someone in the I chat help. <laughs> All right, but chat also clarified it. I think it was more so referencing that five. Kevin was referenced in the last two episodes, not that he's going mm-hmm. to be on any of the Oh, future. got it. Mm-hmm. Oh, and also, how dare this show remind me of the BB Can 5 Buzzkill competition, which literally, that is the worst night BB Can has ever given me, including the night of the first eviction of BB Can 6. <laughs> no, that Wait, was what? Worse. I was so mad and it was so long and we stayed up so late it was the middle of the friggin night and then he won <laughs> wait who won i forgot oh, was dylan. Dylan. <laughs> oh my god i was and like i when i met dylan was one of the nicest people i've ever met in the like one time i met him but like at the time watching the season i was not rooting for him i was so furious that he won and i was like i just wasted i was more mad about those eight hours of my life than the like multiple years of auditions and 16 days in a hotel and that was like right after the, the best you. double eviction ever right that was after the the netta boot it's like all right we're going to dylan and i think dylan apparently was also the yeah, dog man it was it was yeah, the double eviction that. that was so good and then on the rhap recap jp announced he was retiring and then dylan won the hoh and i was like this is the worst night of my life what's <laughs> happening it is interesting because the trophy case obviously like i love a good hey study the house and answer these trivia questions but like that's a good example of if you know how long the bb can five buzzkill challenge was like would you really need to study the trophies or could you get the answer to that i would just know get the answer yeah um all right well that's what we have for you tonight uh thank you all for joining us we'll see what happens this week uh, in the house they haven't listen for as much as the the steamroll may or may not be taking place there hasn't really been a quiet week of the game quite yet uh even though we only get peaks here and there um so stay tuned uh we did drop a short earlier this week talking about this uh vivic move on dennis which was very fun um uh, we'll be back on friday for a, a round table we'll talk through Uh, the events of the next couple of days on the drops where we'll see what we get and how much Dennis is in it. Um, And uh, and then, you know, we'll be back next week with another podcast talking through everything here in the Big Brother Canada 12 world. Um, You can always find me over on Twitch uh, watching the episodes live as they air. It's always a fun time over there. Uh, And uh, check out Survivor coverage we've got going on and all that good stuff. Uh, Mike, what, what do you got going? Uh, Well, first, thanks for having me on and withstanding the endurance challenge that was my barrage of stupid and lewd jokes. Uh, And again, I I loved this week so much. It is still wild that this happened. And the way that Dennis went out was so incredibly dramatic that this is what I love about reality television. So I have my hopes 
you know, measured but relatively high for this season moving forward because I've been really enjoying it and the coverage as well. Of course, you mentioned all the Survivor stuff we have going on an episode to just air tonight, one that I quite enjoyed, uh, and I will be chatting with the boot from both that episode and the Amazing Race episode tomorrow for Parade.com. I'll be talking with uh, Jessica Lee and a couple of notable Amazing Race alumni tomorrow as well for our recap. And this weekend, I'll be on the B&B with uh, no other than this person below me, Kirsten McGinnis and Sasha Joseph. Look, Survivor 46 is a messy season, and there are no two people I could think to bring in more than the mess magnets themselves. So we're going to break down all of that. And Posha Recaps just got brought to a landing. If you want to check out some of the coverage we did there, uh, Grace Leader and myself just did a big countdown of the top 10 TV shows of the past 10 years. Absolutely wild uh, as we formally end post-show recaps after a decade. Thank you all so much for the support, not only these past couple months, but for said entire decade. It means a lot. And we are just getting started, as we like to say. And you can follow everything that I am doing on that and more at a Mike Bloom type on Cameo and on all social media in general. All right, Lavina, what do you got going on? Um, we've got some video content coming from in short form content coming from Survivor. Um, we're going to try to do more Big Brother Canada stuff just because I think it went really well. Um, so, yeah, we'll be working on that and just talking more Big Brother Canada and revving up for, I know I'm too early, but BB26. Come on, you guys, start the preseason. Oh, I heard it's <laughs> all stars. Rumors. I heard it's all stars. They're bringing oh my uh, God, four totally coaches all back. Stars. Um, uh, yeah, Amon's but, uh, already started preloading his tweets. I saw him tweet tonight. <laughs> they're drafted they're drafted right now yeah oh i have his account right now actually mm. <laughs> you're All the right, blonde well. woman yelling <laughs> on my timeline <laughs> uh, but yeah you can follow me um on socials at lpabs with two s's all right and kirsten Yes, uh, Lindsay Wilson and I just finished covering Tuca and Birdie over on Bojack Horse Pod. So if people want to check that out, you can. Um, Sasha, Joseph, and I every week have mess with mess magnets. Uh, this week's episode was really messy and all over the place. And last week we talked about Quiet On Set, the Nickelodeon uh, documentary with the, the gals from Crime Scene. So don't want people to miss that one if they hadn't heard it yet. And this Friday... Uh, my next episode of the Lonely Boys podcast talking about Gossip Girl is going to come out, which was really fun. And of course, Mike, where you mentioned the BNB, you can follow me everywhere at Kirsten Said What, including twitch.tv slash Kirsten Said What. All right. Well, that's what we have for you tonight. Thank you all so much for joining us. We'll see all of you next time. <laughs>